Our film starts with a guy climbing up a wall to a church carrying something. He knocks on the church window. We then see someone else walk in with a gun looking around the place. He ends up in a graveyard and while looking around another guy jumps at him resulting in him falling down a tunnel. He gets up battered and bruised and eventually ends up in a crypt. When he gets to it, he finds it belongs to someone named Hannah who died in 1269, but before anything else can happen, he's ambushed and strangled to death before he's crushed under the sarcophagus and decapitated. We then move forward in time as the guy gets dropped off seemingly on the same island as the previous incident. He attempts to talk to the locals but seems to have trouble finding someone who speaks English. A guy named Peter shows up on a horse and buggy and explains that the locals don't talk to strangers. He finds out that the guy who was dropped off is the son of the man who had been murdered. Peter eventually takes the son to the scene where his father's body is still under the sarcophagus. He explains that no one knew the crypt even existed until the incident and that no one knows how he got under there. The son then reads the words on the sarcophagus that warns that no one should disturb Hannah's grave. Peter then lets him know the legend of Hannah that ends up with her being a vampire. Despite Peter's sister Mary's insistence that his father bleed the story, the son wasn't having it. After dark, the son freaks out when he sees his father's murder in his room, but when he tries to show Peter, nothing is there. He later heads to the school where Mary is a teacher and goes off on her after teaching one of her classes about how offended he was about her belief that his dad believed in vampires. Eventually, the son puts together a plan to get his father out from under the sarcophagus, which includes emptying it to lighten the load. As he tries to break the seal, the locals try to warn him that he should not do it. Peter eventually guilts the locals to help the son by pointing out how much his father did for the island, resulting in them changing their mind and helping. After a lot of effort, they get the lid up, and when the son looks in, he is shocked to see Hannah looking completely intact with no decay. They apparently walk away, and we eventually see Hannah awaken, breathing heavily, and exit her crypt as a poof of green smoke and transform into a wolf. She then attacks the blind man's dog before heading back to her crypt before daylight. The blind man warns the rest of the village that the wolf that killed his dog had to be Hannah, and if they don't reseal the tomb, she will be back to full strength in a few days, which angers the son. He goes back to the crypt to look at the body. Meanwhile, one of the father's killers heads back to his place and kidnaps Mary. Eventually, they fight, with Mary putting in no attempt to help. He eventually gets the upper hand when he takes the assailant's protective mask off, exposing his disfigured face, resulting in him running off. Mary later explains to the son that there was a devil's cult on the island, and she suspected that everything, including his father's murder, leading him to come to the island, was all a plan to make sure Hannah's tomb was open. He talks down to her again for not telling him about her theory before doing all that, before snuggling up to her at the fire. They are woken up the next morning by the blind man, who lets them know he picked some dog bane that needs to be around her body before nightfall, to keep her in the crypt. The son informs him either way they're going to put the lid back on soon. That night we see Hannah wake up again, but go back to sleep as the dog bane worked. The next day we finally learn after almost an hour of this film that the son's name is Chris and that he and Mary are now a couple because a pushy guy that yells at her is better than weird village people, I guess. Chris tells Peter that he's taking Mary away from the island and Chris gives his approval even though Mary totally wants nothing to do with the idea. We then see the blind man and another guy making a plan to put a stake through Hannah's heart but when they get separated, one of the cultists strangles the guy, helping the blind man to death. Back at the tomb, the rest find that it has been sabotaged, and the rope that was holding the lid was used to hang the blind man. As the villagers go to bury the blind man, Peter begins yelling at them that they need to finish the job of moving the tomb, so they can seal it, apparently finally believing the superstition as a side effect of sleeping with Mary. Chris heads back down to Hannah's tomb, apparently to keep watch, but for whatever reason loses it and removes the dog bane. As he does, her body disappears. He then runs back to the village and warns everyone that Hannah is loose while grabbing a wooden stake, all while we see her watching. We then see her stalk a guy and attack him. Back at Hannah's tomb, Mary decides to head down there looking for Chris. She barely escapes the cultists and as she continues to look, finds that her brother Peter was the lead cultist all along and is responsible for the plan to kill Chris's father and explains that he wanted immortality. Mary tries to convince him to come with her, but he's too far gone and eventually decides that they can both have immortality. Meanwhile, outside, Chris kills the deformed cultist, and Hannah continues to go around the village looking for victims, but is chased away by villagers. In chasing her, they end up running into the earlier victim, who has now been turned into a vampire, and is now begging to be killed as he can control his urges, which they oblige. Back at the tomb, it looks as if Peter has decided to use Mary as a sacrifice, but Chris goes to stop him. He tries to make a deal to help Peter, but Peter tries to attack Chris instead before he can free her, resulting in him getting stabbed in the leg and bleeding. Chris and Mary take off, leaving Peter behind just in time for him to be confronted by Hannah. 
She corners him and feeds on him, marking the first official bite scene in the film happening in its last 12 minutes. Before she can drain him, the villagers corner her. She escapes via disappearing, but the villagers end up staking Peter. At the cemetery, Chris, carrying a large piece of lumber, begins taunting Hannah. Mary looks out the window in time to watch Hannah attack Chris in wolf form. She gets to him in time just to throw the dog bane on her as she went to feed on Chris, resulting in her running off in wolf form. Eventually, Chris goes up to a cliff. Hannah then appears in front of him, and when she goes to confront him, he throws his lantern on her, setting her on fire. She launches herself off the cliff, and when the villagers go to her body, they only see a charged skeleton, which then gets up and tries to attack them. But eventually she goes down on her own and begins weeping. Chris uses this time to stake her through the heart and then they bury the body. The film ends with us seeing Chris and Mary leave the island on a boat. One of Mary's school kids then goes off running and tells a girl he did what she told him to do. The girl then tells him to come to her because she doesn't like the sun and in the final scene we see that she is a vampire. Mary in this film is played by actress Patty Shepard. While she does not become a vampire in this film, she did play the main vampire in the 1971 flick Werewolf vs. the Vampire Woman. Thanks for watching. If you like this content, please leave a like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to know every time I update. If you want to help my channel grow, please check out my Patreon where you can get access to content early as well as see the content that can't be uploaded here on YouTube. Link will be in the description. Until next time.